Have you seen graphics like this? This apparently describes a tunnel. But what exactly is a secure tunnel? And what does it have to do with VPNs and proxies? The term tunnel is something that really confused me years ago when I started to learn about computer science. Like I know what a tunnel is, but it made no sense as a technical term. In this video series, I try to make the videos that I wish I had back then and I hope at the end of this video, you somewhat have an idea of what the F a tunnel is. To understand this video, however, you should already be familiar with what a server is and what a protocol is and also what network layers are. Luckily for you, I made those exact three videos already. So maybe check them out before this one or keep watching and then when you start to get confused, then check out the other videos. In the video about network layers, I explained that you can think of the whole network stack as a black box. If you want to transmit some text to a specific IP and port, just hand it over and moments later it magically appears on the target computer. You can do the same with Netcat on a computer. You can listen here on port 1234 and then you can connect to the IP and port and entering some text and sending it, it will magically appear on the target over there. If you understand this, then understanding what a tunnel is will be easy. Let me show you a small example program that I've written in Python. I call it Forwarder. It does what the name says. You can pass in a source IP and port and a destination IP and port. It will then create a socket to listen on this IP and port. So basically it is a server that is listening on localhost 1337. And when a client connects to this, it will establish a new TCP connection to the target host and port. This is just an endless loop. And if the client sends some data, it will read this data and send it to the remote target. And if the remote target sends some data back, it will be sent to the client. As you can see, this program simply forwards any data sent to it. Let's do a quick local experiment. I execute this forwarder and I listen on localhost 1337 and I forward all data to localhost 1234. Then I execute netcat with a listener on port 1234 and we are ready. So the target netcat program is listening on 1234, but we have a forwarder that forwards everything from 1337 to 1234. When we now execute netcat to connect to 1337, we can see that the forwarder got a new connection and connected to the target netcat. And when we send some data, it gets forwarded. Also, if we respond with some text, it gets forwarded back. And now wait for it. Of course, we can put this forwarder program on a server on the internet. Here I listen on all interfaces on port 1337 and I forward all the incoming data to the host IP info IO port 80. IP info IO is a website that can display your IP address. So with curl IP info, you can get this JSON data with your IP. And now comes the magic trick. Let's do curl, but this time we use the server with the forwarder. Curl HTTP IP port 1337 minus V to see the HTTP data. And then we also have to add the correct host header, but unimportant details. If we execute this now, we can see that the forwarder received the request from the client and forwarded it and we got the response back. And what a surprise, our IP has now changed and is the IP of the forwarded server. And I hope you know what we just did. We created a simple proxy. Huh, mind blown. I would maybe also call this already a tunnel. We used this server to tunnel connections from here to here. But I think there's a small nuance differences about the term tunnel and proxy that is worth exploring more. But, but first something else, we will come back to that. Of course, this is not a very secure proxy. We just forwarded the plain data over the network. So a network attacker who can observe the traffic, like those elite Starbucks Wi-Fi pineapple hackers, they can just see what we sent. So while we obscured the real IP for the target website we contacted, somebody could still sniff this traffic, but we can build on top of that. Let's add some crypto to it and encrypt the traffic. Here is the forwarder again with a small modification. I call it the XOR forwarder. And it's basically the same as the old forwarder, except that before we forward the data to either the target or back to the client, we run XOR encryption over it. Obviously, this is not secure either, but I think it's enough to illustrate how it works. Crypto is hard and it would be a bit distracting a bit. So let's keep it basic. Anyway, now we can do this. 
on our server, we can now run the XOR forwarder targeting the ipinfo.io host again and listen on port 1337. However, when the connected client sends data, it will use XOR on the data before forwarding it to ipinfo. So it now expects the data to be XOR encrypted. And to do this, we can also run the XOR forwarder on our local machine. We listen on local port 1337 and we forward the data to our proxy server port 1337 as well. If we now execute curl targeting our local host listener, this XOR forwarder takes the clear text data and runs XOR over it before forwarding it to the server. The server then receives the data and runs XOR over it again, basically decrypts it and then forwards the clear text data to ipinfo.io. We basically just built an encrypted secure proxy to forward the data between these two computers. So when now an attacker is eavesdropping on the network connection, they don't know the data that was actually sent and received. Of course, it's XOR, they could easily decrypt it, but you know, I think the idea is clear. Now look at this, how does this look like? Well, this already kind of looks like a basic VPN setup. You have a local VPN client installed on your machine and it connects to the VPN server. In between, it's encrypted. However, there's a big difference and that also introduces the concept of tunnels. In our simple proxy setup, we just forwarded the content inside of TCP. If you watched a video about the networking layers, you can imagine this just to be double. This is the proxy server and this is the target IP info IO. We send text over there, it gets unpacked, maybe XOR decrypted and then packed again forwarded to IP info.io. Real VPN protocols use a bit more magic because it uses these layers in a beautiful way. When you fall for those VPN ads and get yourself a VPN, you intended to use it like a proxy, but the real purpose of a VPN is very different. VPN technologies are actually intended to provide you access to a virtual private network, a whole network. That's what corporate or company VPNs are for. Because real VPN clients and servers do not just forward these requests like a basic proxy, but it actually packages up the entire packet. Let's look at this with black boxes. First black box, if you want to contact ipinfo.io through a VPN, for you it's transparent. The term transparent means that you don't need to know or see what is really happening, it just works. So you contact IP info IO and magically you get a response with an IP that is not your machine's IP, but the IP of the VPN server. So let's break away the layers of the black box and look deeper. Hmm, this looks like just a regular TCP connection. Exactly like is shown in the network layer video. We just sent the TCP packet from our computer to IP info. So where's the VPN server? It's hiding even more layers below. It's basically this black box down here. VPNs actually tunnel the whole IP and TCP packet. So before, this was like the physical layer. The IP and TCP packet were really transmitted through a wire to other computers. But this is the beauty of layers. Instead of a physical wire, you actually have a VPN network, a VPN protocol here, which consists of all the same layers again. So let's look at a made up VPN protocol. I would call it OpenVPN just to have a real life reference, but of course OpenVPN works a bit more complicated in practice. Anyway, so whatever data is given to the VPN protocol, well, as mentioned, this data is a complete packet with IP and TCP header, but ignore that. It attaches a VPN layer on top of it, like an OpenVPN packet header. Maybe we also encrypt the whole data. We give that to the TCP layer, the IP layer. They add their things, send it over the actual wire to the server. The VPN server, it unpacks the IP layer, then the TCP layer, gives that to the OpenVPN server. It does its OpenVPN stuff like decrypting the data, which now is actually a full IP and TCP packet and just puts this packet on the wire in its local network. And this is what a tunnel is. On our computer, we can just use TCP and IP and send some data to a target server, maybe within a VPN network. The OpenVPN software client and server then take this whole TCP IP packet, wraps it or encapsulates it within an OpenVPN packet. It uses then of course TCP IP of the actual computer network to transmit it to the server. It gets unpacked and placed within this corporate internal network. And it can then reach there an internal server. 
This is the beauty of network layers and abstractions and black boxes. You can plug them together in weird ways to create amazing solutions. Now there's one last thing I want to mention because this was kind of theoretical and you might wonder how can you write your own VPN? How can you grab a whole TCP IP packet to wrap it and send it to another server? It is of course kind of complex to do that. There is a reason why people use existing protocols and implementations like OpenVPN, Ting or WireGuard. But essentially they use a feature called TUN or TAP. This is like a virtual or emulated or faked network card. Your laptop has for example a built-in Wi-Fi network card and this shows up to the operating system and to other programs as a network card. This network card is then configured to handle certain traffic. This means if you want to send a TCP IP packet, the operating system knows according to the assigned IP address, subnet mask and gateway address, which interface to use. And then the operating system hands over this IP packet to the actual physical hardware network chip, which then takes this raw data and turns it into radio signal or voltage on an ethernet wire. And TUN and TAP is the same. They are also network interfaces, but they are non-existent network cards. You can tell the operating system, please route almost all traffic over this virtual network card. And then actually behind it is a program. The system gives this program the complete TCP IP packet and expects you to act like a network card. So you can now send it over to the VPN server and release it into the network there. And if you look up a basic TUNTAP programming tutorial, this is what you can see there. First you somehow have to create such an interface. This depends on your operating system if you need to install additional drivers or so. But if you have now created such a virtual interface, you can write a program that opens this TUN interface and reads from it. If you send a ping targeted to that IP network, the operating system will then forward the ping packet to your program and your program reads the whole packet and does whatever. So if you want to go a bit deeper on a technical level, I really can recommend to you this excellent blog post. It's a bit older, so some commands and function names might have changed a bit, but overall this is still how it works. And it also expands on this basic read example and has there a section how to implement a full tunnel. I hope this helped you to kind of understand what it means to have a proxy, a tunnel, a VPN and so forth. It is complex, but also in some way kind of simple. So if you like these videos explaining computer science terminology, let me know in the comments what other words are confusing to you and then see you soon. Do you see this? Do you see this? This is a very shitty handwritten font. I have the solution for you. Life over font.